Hey everyone, Tech Rally here, and today we're going to be talking about top five questions you should ask before attending a coding bootcamp. If you didn't know, coding bootcamps are very expensive. Shut up and take my money. Before you decide to fork up fifteen to thirty thousand dollars to learn how to code, I really believe as a customer you should know what you're getting yourself into. The last thing you want to do is pay that amount of money, finish the curriculum, and just end up in the same position that you came from. So you might be asking yourself. What makes this guy qualified? Well, funny enough, I also attended a coding bootcamp school back in 2015. I researched as much as I could, asked what I believe were the right questions to ask, and made a leap from one career to another. I put top five questions for the sake of this video, but truth be told, you should be asking way more than that. Ultimately, it's up to you to leverage as many resources as you can by talking to people who graduated from the bootcamp, start networking. Feel confident that you eventually made the right decision. Also, if you're looking into changing careers into software development, feel free to like and subscribe. It will really help me out a lot. I do my best to provide as many tips and tricks to get into this industry. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start asking those right questions. Question number one: How is a coding bootcamp different from taking an online Udemy course? Bootcamps are fifteen to thirty thousand dollars now. Udemy courses are twelve dollars during flash sales. What if you sign up for a coding bootcamp and they basically just refer you to a bunch of Udemy courses, and it ends up being a major part of the curriculum? What did you exactly pay for then? It's mind-boggling to me to hear some horror stories where coding bootcamps they don't actually have a curriculum of their own. A lot of people say that coding bootcamps are a waste of money and you can learn everything on your own for free. Although it is true that you can learn everything by yourself, what coding boot camps are supposed to provide you is a secret recipe or a catered curriculum to teach you how to code. This goes totally off the rail if a coding boot camp solely relies on Udemy courses to teach you the material. That is a big no-no. Period. Question two: Who are my instructors and teacher assistants? A lot of coding boot camps talk about having the best instructors in the business, but what is that really based off of? I read enough stories and horror stories where inexperienced teachers are teaching the class, or really good teachers are leaving before the curriculum actually finishes. I can't imagine paying that much money and having a horrible instructor or an instructor that just decides to walk up and leave one day because they're overly worked. If I was in your shoes, I would ask, how many years of experience does a typical instructor have? What is their professional experience as software engineers, and maybe even what are his experience in teaching a class of thirty or forty people? I even heard some crazy stories where the lead instructors was a student from the last cohort. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that one, right? On top of just knowing who your instructors are going to be, I would even expand on this and ask if an instructor does decide to leave, do I get a refund on my coding bootcamp? How do you make sure that I'm in the best position to succeed if something like this happens? Do we get two teachers? Do we get three teachers? How does that exactly work? Seems like a no-brainer to have some insurance policy around the situation. You want to learn from the best people, and if you're going to be paying that type of price, that should be an expectation. Question number three: What happens if I fall behind? So this is where my age shows, at least in coding bootcamp years. When I attended my coding bootcamp back in 2015. There was no real concept of failing. That's what I loved about it. No grades, no pass, no fail. I can just invest in actually learning. Once you start incorporating pass fails, people will come up with so many different ways to just keep moving on from module to module without really understanding the material. It can lead to a lot of pressure where people just potentially might cheat or look at other people's GitHub, and that is a recipe for disaster when you're trying to apply for jobs. I went off on a little tangent there, but either way, the important thing with this question is what exactly happens if I fall behind and I can't pass a module? How exactly does someone pass or fail? How do you prevent people from cheating so that they can't just move on from module to module? Do I get kicked out if I'm struggling with my curriculum? If I do get kicked out, do I get a partial or a full refund? What happens if I did an income share agreement? Am I still on the hook for that? These are all the questions that I would adapt from from the original one. What happens if I fail? You want to protect your asset as much as possible in case things like this become a reality. Even if it's not in your favor, there's a lot of value of being fully aware of the risks that you're taking when you attend a coding bootcamp school. So in this sense. Even if you do make that decision to do a coding bootcamp, just being aware of it and understanding the risk can really change your mindset of how you approach your school and time during the coding bootcamp. 
So awareness, that's the most important part. Question number four, how many and what type of projects should I expect when I finish my coding bootcamp? Coding bootcamps, fair or not, is supposed to get you job ready, not just teach you how to code. If you want to be job ready, you need to build meaningful projects. I would ask what kind of projects alumni have built and if there are any examples online. If the alumni projects aren't available online and only on GitHub, to me, that is a huge red flag. A project has to be accessible through a domain. This is the minimum requirement, period. Recruiters aren't gonna go to your GitHub and pull your code and then test your stuff locally. So there needs to be a domain where a hiring manager or recruiter can just easily access your project portfolio. Specifically to what type of projects to work on, they should be trying to solve a real world problem. Something like an invoice app or product feedback app or a bug tracker are just one of many examples where it's complex enough to build and anyone would understand the use case for it. Something that would be a little bit kind of off topic or just not everyone would fully understand is maybe just a mountain climbing application. Yes, you may be an avid mountain climber, but it might not really apply to everyone. So try to find some type of project or tasks that can really just be applied to as many people as possible. This is more of a personal thing, but I would prefer if a coding bootcamp just gave a list of projects and you could kind of choose from one of them rather than just coming up with your own idea. As a new developer, you don't really know what is considered a good project or a bad project in relation to getting a job. So why not leverage the expertise? In this case, it's the coding bootcamp and kind of see what projects have been successful and what projects have not. I would like to think that the coding bootcamp has done enough research to figure out one way or the other. The main point is, is that you're going to have to build projects. And if your coding bootcamp is not putting you in a position to do that, then that is another red flag. Question number five is how will the coding bootcamp help me find a job? This is the most important question to me. How the heck is this coding bootcamp going to help me find a job? Am I just expected to apply on LinkedIn and Glassdoor by myself? Do I just turn in 100 applications per day? Do you have a career service team? And if so, are they going to be giving me intros? How are resources allocated to each student in respect to the job search? I know some schools do career coaches, but I've heard very mixed reviews. If I was new to a coding bootcamp, I would ask, is that it? What else can you provide? I do admit that these days it does feel like you need to be more proactive than reactive in your job hunt. In 2021 and for 2022, I would expect the coding bootcamp to at least have some type of career service team where you can talk to staff about your job hunt and just get some good recommendations on your resume and maybe even give you intros to certain companies. Unfortunately, I've heard some bad stories about coding boot camps just throwing you away after you finish the curriculum and that's just wrong. You invest a lot of your money with a certain expectation and if they don't meet those expectations, then what are you going to do? So let's try to avoid that as much as possible. Fairly or unfairly, coding boot camps and the price tag that comes with it will be judged based on how you find a job. This not only applies to teaching you how to code, but diving deep into their career service team. So definitely ask that question because to me, that's the most important one. So that's it. There are way more questions that you should consider and think about. I highly encourage you to view the coding bootcamp, not as just a school that teaches you how to code, but a school that is expected to get you a job. Cater your questions around that and you'll know exactly what to ask. Another thing I wanted to add was before you sign up for a coding bootcamp, I highly encourage you to read the contract and maybe even consult the lawyer, especially if you do an income share agreement. It can be a blessing or the biggest mistake you ever made by doing an income share agreement. So understand the risks that are involved. At the end of the day, if a coding bootcamp is being difficult or can't answer these type of questions, then maybe you shouldn't invest your time and money into them. I hope that this was helpful for you and gave you some clarity on how to approach coding bootcamps if you're ever interested in them. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And for all of you developers, keep on coding, your time will come. Tech Rally out.